During the special counsel's investigation into whether the Trump campaign colluded with Russia to win the presidential election, one of the Russian names that comes up is Oleg Deripaska. He's a businessman with close ties to the Kremlin. News Hour special correspondent Ryan Chilcote landed a rare interview with him. He starts with some background. He is a self made tycoon, one of Russia's wealthiest businessmen who controlled for years one of the world's largest aluminum producers, Rusal, and a number of the nation's industrial giants employing hundreds of thousands of Russians. Like other Russian magnates, the U.S. government says Oleg Deripaska is an ally of President Vladimir Putin. Over the last two years, Deripaska's name has come up in American news reports as a figure with ties to some of the targets in special counsel Robert Mueller's now-concluded Russia investigation. Deripaska's interactions with the eventual chairman of President Trump's 2016 campaign, Paul Manafort, go back years. More recently, Deripaska and Manafort came into a financial dispute with Deripaska charging that Manafort owes him millions of dollars. In an email revealed by the Washington Post to an associate by the name of Konstantin Kalimnik, who the U.S. believes has ties to Russian intelligence, Manafort even considered, on his own, whether to give Deripaska private briefings about the campaign. Last year, the U.S. slapped sanctions on Deripaska and his company. At the time, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said the aim was to hit at the Russian government. While the sanctions against Deripaska remain, they have been lifted from some of his largest holdings, after Deripaska agreed to reduce his stake and control in the firms. And where are you going now? Today I sat down with Deripaska in Nizhny Novgorod, home to Gaz, Russia's largest maker of commercial vehicles, a company still under American sanctions. Do you feel that the Attorney General's summary of the Mueller report has exonerated you? I never felt you know, guilty. <laughs> I'm not a subject, first of all, as you know, but uh, in, 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 in my view, it was so bizarre to claim that Russia you know, made any you know, important role you know, in those elections. We know from the court documents, the special counsel has laid out pretty extensive evidence that Russia did interfere in the election, not just in the digital landscape, but in real ways, by organizing protests. The evidence that they've already laid out in various court filings is pretty convincing, no? I don't believe in this, to be honest. I live in Russia. I know what Russian state capable, you know, Russian bureaucrats capable. I just don't believe that they're so sophisticated to be part of it. Just don't believe it. If they're so sophisticated, why we have such a bad economic situation? If you're such a believer in Mueller and the process of justice, why didn't you, when the special counsel sent you writ written questions, why didn't you answer the questions? It was advice my, from my lawyers. They just said, you know, don't bother. They, they will settle this thing without you. That's an easy way out. Then why wouldn't you just say, I have absolutely nothing to hide. I'm happy to talk to you. Here are my answers. I don't understand. First of all, I have my rights to do so. <laughs> and second, when I saw the list of questions, you know, some of questions had nothing to do with you, very preposterous. And, and, and they said, you know, my lawyer just said, don't bother. How often do you talk to intelligence leaders in Russia? <laughs> you also believe in it. Just a question. Actually, never. Never? I never talk to anyone who was on duty. When you were sanctioned, you know that the U.S. government said that you benefited and were part of Russia's malign activity around the globe. It's all lie. And, and, and wait a second. Uh, first of all, uh, Treasury or OFAC produces this list of 100. And you have quite a lot of experience in Russia. Do you really believe this all 100 people, you know, as you said, how you said, closed, you know, part of this Malay activity, they just put straight you know, all Russian private business? You really believe, you know, they're all guilty in something? President Trump has repeatedly said he believes President Putin when President Putin says Russia didn't interfere in the election. 
Do Russians appreciate those kind of comments from the U.S. president? I think they don't care, <laughs> to be honest. And at, at this moment, Russia more cares about the economic situation in Russia. And how have the sanctions affected the Russian economy? No, it's a stalemate. You know, Russian economy not growing. You know, there is, of course, you know, you know, surplus in the Russian budget because of oil. And, uh, but it's Russian budget, budget in the budget. It's a, it's a state, you know, bureaucrats. You know, ordinary people feel you know, a lot of pressure. Russia is a part global economy. And when the U.S. tried to weaponize on wrong, on ill-advised, you know, their financial system, of course, Russia is a weak you know, player in this case. It's obvious. You know, cost of debt, opportunity to attract capital, you know, everything been affected. When you use it, you know, like in the case of this factory, what on earth brought anyone to believe that if you hit this 40,000 people who works here and you know, 300,000 who supplies them, you know, it will you know, affect you know, Russian foreign policy. It's a private factory. What would change? The argument, as you know, is that it's a private factory owned by you and that if you're close to the Kremlin, uh, and the Kremlin obviously relies on the, the, the taxes that this factory could bring or does bring, that that could change the Kremlin's behavior. Nice. It's very, very straightforward yeah, logic. Nice, nice, but if it's wrong, and if, the, if this factory goes bankrupt, Alec, you if, know, if me and other investors you know, will, will, will lose everything, you know, without any proof that it may affect you know, this way as you described. First of all, it's stupid to believe that something like this could change in, in, a, in a Russian government behavior. Just stupid, just, just another confirmation how far are you from reality. How have the sanctions changed your life? Completely. More free time. You believe that you've lost seven and a half billion dollars as a result of the sanctions? Yeah. How do you come up with that number? Seven and a half billion, how, how do yeah, you? Just, just look at my shares. Would it be worse and now would they worse? So just look, look at the opportunity which been lost. Even on this site, you know, dumbest of working, we have an assembly facility here. And 3,000 people, 3.2 thousand people, 3,200 already lost their jobs. When was the last time you corresponded or someone that you work with representing you corresponded with Paul Manafort? 10 or 11. Yeah. 2010 or 2011? Yeah, 11, yeah. On July 7th, two weeks before President Trump accepted the Republican nomination, Manafort sent an email to Konstantin Kalimnik, where he said, if he needs private briefings, we can accommodate. The he in that email is you, and the private briefings were to be about President Trump's then campaign. Do you believe in this now? I'm confused. What would First, I believe about the email? No, no, but after what's happened with uh, all this Mueller investigation, it's quite, a, quite an old story. I never met Klimnik. Again, Manafort and others from this team almost 10 years work on Ukraine. I'm, you know, tried to sue him and my lawyers were looking for him almost two years. <laughs> Couldn't find them, you know, for, you know, this two project which, uh, you know, he failed to perform. And actually my lawyers suspect it's more than just failure to perform. And do you believe that after all of this, you know, he will offer me, you know, some kind of, you know, gesture or something? Did you ever get any briefings from anyone associated with Paul Manafort about the U.S. No, campaign? Why? Why? <laughs> Did you ever get the offer of any briefing? No. Okay. What would be What would be my benefit to see anything which I could go through Bloomberg Terminal or Google? Did you ever get any polling data? <laughs> no. Paul Manafort's sitting in jail now. How do you feel about that? Do you feel this is poetic justice for you? It's not my game. I feel maybe sorry. He's an old guy. Alex Vladimirovich, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.